Hi there, welcome to the intro tutorial for the Body Puppet tool. Here you're going to learn some super fast and easy ways to give your characters natural animation. Let's start by going right into the Body Puppet panel. The first thing you'll see here is a variety of profiles. The first one on the left will be movement motions. You can see here that if I select one and press the space key, it will immediately begin looping the motion in preview mode. Next down is the idle profile group. All the looping puppet motions here are for when your character isn't doing much but standing around or getting ready to box. Next group up is the talking profiles. These are various motions associated with people having conversations. The final group are the mood motions. All these motions here simulate a different kind of emotional reaction, such as anger, fear, or surprise. You can customize the looping speed of all these individual animations by using the speed slider at the top. If this guy is in a hurry to sneak somewhere, I can up the speed a little bit so he can get there faster. However, if he's being extra careful, I can lower it to be a little bit more discreet. The exaggeration slider will do the same thing. If I preview this dancing motion, I can really get my character into the music if I raise the exaggeration slider, whereas if he's a little bit more shy, I can decrease the slider down a bit to make his dancing less conspicuous. There are other sliders below that you can use to customize your motion as well. I'll preview this jogging motion to demonstrate how to use them. If I want a different view of my animation, I can simply hold the Alt key and right click drag to rotate around my character while his animation plays. Here you can see I can adjust the lean of my character as well as the elbow height of his run. In addition to that, I can put his hands more forward or back. As you can see, these sliders can really be useful for generating cartoon-like movement. I can also make him sway a bit more during his run, as well as put his foot positioning a little further apart or closer together. Each different puppet motion has different slider names and characteristics. So go experiment with them yourself to find the perfect motion for your character. You can easily find a match for any character personality type. Aside from slider control, there is also mouse control. To get there, you can press tab or click over to the mouse control tab. If I preview in this mode, the character will stay stationary until I move my mouse. Then basically I can rotate the mouse around the semi-transparent indicator in the middle to go back and forth through motions. This is particularly useful if I want to record brief sections of a motion repeating, or randomly mix up the actions. Okay, the next thing I'm going to demonstrate is masking body sections. You can see me previewing this cheering motion right here, and what I'm going to do is first record the motion so you can see the original first. You'll see when I scrub along the timeline that the motion will turn out just like I recorded it. This time, I'm going to head over to the masking tab and select his left arm. You will see it change color to indicate it won't be included in the next recording. I'll preview first to show you what it will look like. I'm going to open up the timeline and adjust my puppet motion a bit. When I open up my character's motion track, I can drag the end of the white time scrub at the top to zoom out, and you'll be able to see my puppet clip right there. If I think this puppet clip is a bit long, I can easily just click and drag the end of the clip to make it shorter. You'll see that when I play back though that my character's animation will go a lot faster now because I essentially just compacted it. I'll just undo that for now. If I want to make it that length without making it faster, I can just go up and use the break tool. This will break my motion clip in half so that I can select the second half and delete it. If I want to make it longer again, I can't just extend it either as you will see that this will just slow down the motion. What I'll need to do is toggle the loop speed switch at the top. 
This way, when I drag the animation, it will create another copy of the same clip and transition the two. Okay, so now it's time to do something with that idle hand that I masked out. I'm going to select a taunt motion, but this time I'm going to mask out the entire body, except for the left arm and hand. I'm going to layer this second recording over top of the first one, and basically combine elements of both puppet motions. I'll simply go ahead and record that, and you can see that my character is now pointing and motioning as he cheers at the same time. Also, notice that those two previous separate clips in the timeline are now replaced by a single new one. Now there are also female based motions aside from the male ones that are more suitable for feminine characters. You can see that as I run through the various motions in the female library that each motion in all the categories looks much more feminine. I'm going to stop quickly at this sexy idol pose and show you how you can save a puppet profile. Do this if you find a particularly good combination of slider settings and want to save it for a later character. I'll just adjust all of these different sliders to give my character a sort of modeling pose if you will. Once I've done that, I can go up to the Save Profile button and give my motion profile a name. After I've done that, I can go back to my slider controls, fool around with them as much as I want, but when I'm done, I can load that profile back up for any different character simply by using the Load button. This function is useful for a variety of situations, such as if you want to save the same profile for multiple characters. You can also combine your body puppet tool with other tools, such as motion layer editing. What I'm doing here is recording a slow jogging motion using the body puppet tool. Once I've done that, I'll play back my animation just to check it. Then exit the body puppet panel and click on the Edit Motion Layer tool. What I want to do here is make my character point and look at something midway through his jogging cycle. To do this, I'm going to scrub ahead a little to the time where I want his pointing motion to be at its full extent. First, I'm going to select his head and use the rotate gizmo to turn it to the side as if he's looking at something he just passed. Now I'm going to grab his hand and use the movement and rotation gizmos to get it to the point where it looks like he's pointing over at the thing he just saw. I'll also need to select each individual section of his finger and rotate it outwards so that it looks like he's actually pointing at something. You'll see that when I complete this motion, his hand will reach out to point, but it will remain like that for the duration of the animation. Here's where the reset function in the edit motion key panel comes in handy. If I scrub a little bit further down the timeline to where I want his point to end and press the reset button, his arm position will return to the default running pose. What is nice about this is that when I play back, you can see that iClone will automatically blend the edits together so that it looks a lot more natural. There are plenty of other things you can do with blending motions. It's incredibly user-friendly and you can save tons of time.